Hey y'all, and welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're going to go over LeetCode 303 range sum query, and after a rephrase variant. Let's not waste time reading the description, I'll just tell you what the inputs and desired outputs are. We're given a class named numArray, and in it, a constructor that takes in an array of integers. I'll just redraw it up here for explanation purposes. As a quick note, what we choose to do with this constructor parameter will be very important later on. Now, our numArray class also has a function for us to code called sumRange, which takes in a left index and a right index of our member array. We want to return the sum of all the numbers in between these two indices, inclusive. For example, we want to return the addition of numbers between index 0 and index 3. 0 and 3. Pretty simple algebra, what's 5 plus 3 plus 4 plus 10? It's 22. And yes, the left and right indices are inclusive, so we count the numbers at those indices. Lee code leaves out this next bit of detail, to which I say, shame. But this sum range function can be called many, many times. Once, twice, thrice, quadrice, pentice times, and even more. On this note, sure, why not, let's do a few more examples. What is the addition among all numbers between indices 4 and 6? Easy, that's 7. 2 and 5, that's 18. 5 and 5, a bit confusing, but that's just the 3. So, from this function invocation, we observe that the two index parameters can be at the same index. Lastly, the sum between indices 0 and 6 is just the entire array that can happen too. And that's just 29. How did I know that? I just added the 22 and 7. Quick math. And let's remember to fill out the 3 from the previous call. Anywho, how do we solve this? I know what we're all thinking. This problem is technically an easy problem. So there can't be that much to it. We just run a for loop on every single function call and we be code complete. Not quite, because if you click on this topics button, it'll categorize this problem as an array question, yes, but also as a design question. More specifically, and again, I madly code didn't mention it, but if the sum range function can be invoked with say, 1 million QPS, how would we restructure and optimize our code to handle this? Our array can be very lengthy, so potentially running this function, 1 million times in a second, may not be ideal. We'd incur a time complexity of big O n on every invocation. Sure, there's no space, that's great, but we're wasting a lot of CPU. What is a better approach? Let's take a minute and think of some ideas. My first proposal shouldn't be a big leap. We've all probably made use of it at our jobs at one point or another. How about caching? The key idea to caching is to pre-process all the possible left and right indices, their respective sum, and stuffing both into a hash map. So, in a constructor, we can run the following logic one time and one time only. We'd find the sum between indices 0 and 0, which is negative 1, and insert that into our data structure. Then, we do the same thing again between indices 0 and 1, 0 and 2, 0 and 3, all the way until the right pointer is at index 10 and 1 beyond. We can then move the left pointer along and do it all over again. What's the sum that starts at index 1 and ends at index 1? Negative 3. Now, what about the sum range from 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, etc, etc, etc. This is starting to sound like a nested for loop, and that's because it is. This isn't too bad since the pre-processing only happens one time. Maybe it happens on startup of our application or something, in which case it can take however long it wants, ish. The benefit is, on every single sum range call, we'd return the sum immediately in big O of one time complexity. Fantastic. For example, if we had a function call for indices 0 and 0, we could look that up as the key in our map and return the value. Great. While we've optimized our runtime, we now sacrifice all of our RAM, our memory. What is our space complexity? Let's think on it. 
If on every iteration of our nested loop, we insert an entry into our data structure, then how many times we iterated is a one-to-one -one correlation with how many entries there are in our map, and thus the amount of space we've consumed. Big O of n squared. All to say, the space complexity is way too much, and this assumes an even distribution to every single index pair. What if the beginning of the array was queried way, way more? All of a sudden, the other cache entries are just taking up space. How can we further optimize? Let's look at another example. We still want a strategy like caching, but without all the extreme memory consumption. Let's take a look and take this example. If we were to call some range with a left index of two and a right index of four, two and four, what sort of efficient pre-processing can we compute to find the sum really, really fast? Any time complexity of big O one still, like before. Well, if we knew the total sum of our array is 21, and we knew the sum leading up to and including the number at the left index to get six, and oppositely, the sum leading up to and including the integer at the right index to get 11, then don't we have everything we need to calculate the sum in between? Here's our math. We take the 21 and exclude the sum of six, right? Almost. We actually want to minus the sum leading up to and including left minus one. Clearly we want to include this three in our final answer. The correct sum to minus would be the three. Then we can exclude not the 11, but the six. More generalized, it's the sum leading up to and including the right plus one. Altogether, this yields 12. Was that our correct answer? Well, if we take this box, three plus four plus five, we get 12. Yep, they're the same. This is our answer. This is what we return. This is effective, but there are still remaining questions. How do we know to pre-compute these summations? In short, we don't. Thus, we have to loop through our array once to find the sum, yes, but then loop over it a second time to calculate the prefix sums from the left. So the one, three, six, 10, 15, and lastly, the 21. I'm aware you can combine the two and do it all in one loop, but this is for explanation purposes. We're not done yet. We can loop a third time, this time from the right, and compute a similar prefix sum. First, the 6, 11, 15, 18, 20, and lastly, the 21. Let's picture these prefix sums in their corresponding arrays. Okay, way more readable. I trust you know how to calculate prefix sums, but if you don't, there are many ways to do it. One way is to manually set the first number, so here it's one, and then loop through the rest of the array, adding the current number in our input nums to the previous number in our prefix, the left prefix in this case, we get three. What's three plus three? Six. What's four plus six? 10. You get the idea. Anyway, we have everything we need to return the sum in a time complexity of big O1. The space complexity isn't that bad either. It's technically two times big O of n. But as you'll see in the variance, we'll improve on this even more. Without further ado, let's try out some example function calls. What's the sum between indices three and four? Remember our equation is the sum of 21 minus the left prefix at L minus one, which is six, minus the right prefix at right plus one, which is also six. This yields nine, which is the same as what's in between our two indices, inclusive. Fantastic. Let's do two more examples to make sure we understand everything that can happen. What's the range between indices zero and three? Again, it's 21 minus the left prefix at L minus one, which is nothing. This is no good we'd incur an out of bounds error. And if you really think about it, there's nothing to exclude from the left hand side, right? Therefore, we'll adjust our equation. If our pointer is ever at zero, we'll just return zero as the sum to exclude. As always, we'll also exclude the right prefix 
at right plus one, which is 11. We output 10. Verifying this is true. Okay. One more example. We want this sum from 1 to 5, but let's exclude the appropriate left and right sums. The 21 minus the sum at L minus 1, which is 1, minus the sum at R plus 1, but wait, there's nothing to exclude. Therefore, if our right index is ever at the last index, we'll just return 0. Together, we get 20. And what's the sum of this box? Also 20. That is our answer. The time complexity is however many loops we needed in our constructor for pre-processing. So we needed one for the sum. We needed another to create the left prefix array to be a size of n. Same for the right prefix, that's a 2n. And then two more to actually populate these two arrays. So what is that? Five times big O n? Again, this is for the constructor. The function itself is bigger one. As for the space complexity, it's two times big O n because of our arrays here. This is big O. We can drop constants and we have n's across the board. And before we get to the code, I will say most interviewers should accept this, but if they want to pick and choose when to ignore big O, then they may want a more optimized approach. Either way, you'll have to work your way up to the solution so all these approaches are worth knowing. Let's get to implementing. All right, let's firstly pre-process our nums input array. But before that though, let's calculate the total sum. And n for syntactic sugar. Next up, let's initialize our left prefix sum. Zero initialize with a size of n. Like I had mentioned, we'll just manually set the first prefix sum. After, we'll loop from index one to the end of the array. And for each number, we'll calculate the prefix sum there by adding the left prefix at the index before plus the current number in nums. Now we'll do the complete opposite for the right prefix. I'm just going to copy and paste and change everything to be polar opposite. We'll manually set the number, but at the very end, and we'll loop from the right side to the beginning. And on each iteration, we'll add the prefix sum on the right to the current number. And cool, that is our constructor. Our function should be simple now. We'll minus the total sum with the left sum and the right sum. Defining them, the left sum is the left prefix sum at L minus one if the left index is greater than zero. If it's equal to zero, then we just return zero. We'll do something very similar for the right sum. We only do right plus one if the right pointer is in bounds. Otherwise, we just return zero. Okay, quite a journey to get here, but wait, there's more. Let's follow up with a variant. All right, it's time for the variant. What does big tech actually ask? Turns out, not much. As if this problem was tricky enough, companies will intentionally leave out requirement details, making this question even more ambiguous and vague. So here are some starting questions to ask. How are we given the input array? In which case, the interviewer may answer, it's up to you. Most candidates define a classless function, which as we know is the wrong direction. Like we did in the OG problem, we want to pre-compute some data. Therefore, a class with a constructor and function is what we want. Next up, how do we even know where the subarray should start and end? Once again, you may get a, it's up to you. Let's stick to what we know. We can define a member function that ingests a left and right index parameter. And as bonus, you can ask, does a 32-bit integer suffice as the return type? The answer is most likely yes, but this shows your interviewer that you're thinking of all the possible edge cases. Other than this, if we weren't given the following details, I'd also ask the length of the array, how many invocations will be made to our function, and even how much time and space complexities we can sacrifice to optimize our code. And with that, let's dive straight into our programmatic approach. 
Here's our example from the previous problem with an example called now to nums1. You have total freedom to name this whatever you like, so long as it's sensible. And yes, I know, these aren't just ones and zeros. But let's try to build some intuition on the optimal approach first, and start with what we're already familiar with. Anyway, as a refresher, we want to find the sum from index 3 to 4. To do this, we took the total sum, and excluded the sum at r plus 1, and the sum at l minus 1. What was left over was our answer, the 4 plus 5 of 9. That's great and all, but there's an even more optimized approach. It all lies in how you think about this mathematically. Do we really need two prefix sums? Does one suffice? Let's look at the left prefix in isolation and see what information we'd already have. For one, we'd know the sum leading up to and including the right pointer, right? It would be 15. In hindsight, we knew the answer to be 9. So what is the third variable in this equation? Well, it's this sum. Is it possible to solve for this? Yes, absolutely. This is located at L minus 1. To prove this, if we take the 15 or encode the left prefix at R and exclude the left prefix at L minus 1 of 6, by the way, we get the desired 9. This is our answer. This is what we return. Note that we never touched the right prefix. Let's demolish that. We never needed the total sum either. Let's nuke that as well. What we're left with is a single prefix sum, so let's rename it accordingly to just prefix. It's technically still a left prefix, but this is more concise. And as a bonus effect, we no longer have an off by one with the right pointer. We never had to calculate r plus one, only r. Therefore, on the right hand side will always be inbound. The left pointer, sadly, will still have this edge case. If we needed the sum range from zero to five, for example, then L minus one wouldn't access a number. We just substitute it with a zero, again, like we did in the OG problem. But okay, that's the gist of it. Now that we have the intuition, let's look at some examples where the values are rightfully ones and zeros. Here we are, I even pre-processed the prefix sum for us. Let's just double check some stuff. At index six, there are supposedly two ones. It's true, here's the first, here's the second. At index one, there are zero ones, and as we can see, there's nothing in sight. Okay, let's see if our equation holds up. The number of ones from indices zero to three is clearly just the one, or according to our formula, one minus zero, fantastic. The number of ones from index two to seven is two, or two minus zero. Lastly, the number of ones from index one to six is two. Two minus zero is indeed the right answer. Amazing stuff. The time complexity is big O n in the constructor and big O one in the function. The space complexity is big O n because of our prefix array here. Okay, let's take a look at the code. Let's spin up our syntactic sugar and and then after that, our prefix sum. Once again, we'll have as many elements as there are in our array. We'll manually set the first prefix sum number and build from there. We'll iterate from one to the end of the array and populate our prefix at that index in adding what was there at the previous index plus the current number. As for our function, we'll only need to compute the left sum, which is the prefix sum at L minus one if the left pointer wasn't zero. Otherwise, we'll assign zero. There's nothing to exclude. Ultimately, we'll return the prefix sum at the right index minus this left sum, and we are done. I wish you luck on your interviews. And if you learned something today, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.